Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself, Amata, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Hope you're all having a lovely weekend. For most of you, this is the last working day before Christmas. I hope you all have exciting plans for the holidays. But to kick things off, we're going to begin things with NVIDIA and 7nm. Now this is actually relating to who is actually going to be handling the production of the 7nm GPU. You may recall there was reports doing the rounds that NVIDIA had actually tapped Samsung instead of the expected company of TSMC to handle production of the 7nm chip. Now this has actually been answered by Jensen Huang, the NVIDIA CEO, during GCC 2019. And he basically responded to questions that the majority of orders for the next gen GPU will be handled by TSMC. However, Samsung will play a small role. So essentially, it's not going to be split like part of it's Samsung, part of it's TSMC. No, it's going to be TSMC will have the majority of orders and Samsung are going to be having a small amount of orders. If I had to guess why NVIDIA have done this, it's probably just due to the fact that they're very aware that TSMC are providing chips for a lot of companies and their production is obviously filling the strain a little bit and they don't want to have um, supply issues due to that. So basically Samsung's there to take the load a little bit off TSMC um, so that 7nm can get going without a hitch, at least on the production side of things. Now, if this follows the previous history between NVIDIA and Samsung, Samsung are most likely going to be handling entry-level mobility and desktop GPUs with TSMC getting the rest of it. And Jensen himself highlighted just how important TSMC are for the company without the nodes that they've worked on, for example, 16nm for Pascal and 12nm for Volta and Turing, they probably would not have been as successful. So I'm not surprised at all to see NVIDIA doing this. I was very skeptical about the reports that were doing the rounds that they were turning to Samsung entirely for production, but it seems they weren't entirely untrue, just partially untrue. Now, for those of you wondering if Jensen deigned to give us any information as to when we might see a 7nm GPU on the market, unfortunately, he did not. He did not even give us a hint. He basically said that they're not looking to disclose any date at the moment. So, unfortunately, it's still up for speculation. However, I would expect some more concrete information at CES 2020. I don't know if we'll get exact release date, but I think we'll learn a little bit more about what's going on with Ampere, whether or not it's actually going to be called Ampere all that sort of stuff. But we're going to move on now from NVIDIA to AMD and Ryzen 7. To be more specific, this is the Ryzen 7 4700U, which is a Renoir part. And what we actually have is a 3D Mark listing, which gives us a really nice look at the specifications as they currently stand. What do we actually see here? Well, we see eight cores at 4.2 gigahertz. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that it is showing as eight cores only. So this will not have SMT. So the closest cousin to this in the current generation would be the 3500 Ryzen CPU. But we do have a bit more to share here in terms of specifications. We see, again, that 4.2 gigahertz um, clock speed for the maximum turbo core clock, but the reported stock clock is actually showing as 2 megahertz. Not megahertz, sorry, gigahertz. It's been a long day. Forgive me. 2 gigahertz, not megahertz. That'd be a bit weird. Oh, I might be a bit concerned that AMD had actually gone back in, in time. But regardless of my mess up just there, that's a pretty nice look at the specifications. Unfortunately, we do not see any TDP information. It literally shows as zero watts. And I'm going to push the boat here and say that's not being detected correctly. I mean, I know that's like a, a, a daring comment to make, but I'm, I'm going to go out with it, guys. Like, you know, hold me. I'm feeling brave. Now, we also have, helpfully, um, thanks to the folks over at Reddit, which is where these leaks actually come from, a comparison of the 4700U with the 3700U and 3500U, which, of course, are both Ryzen 3000 series chips. Unsurprisingly, the 4700U does pretty well against them. We see a, a score of 4893 for the 4700U, 4149 for 3700U, and 3656 for the 3500U. Still nice to see Ryzen Renoir is looking very, very promising, looking like a nice upgrade versus its predecessor. But of course, we should wait and see to get more benchmarks before we make any final conclusions about the chip. But still, 
Good start, I think we can all agree. So we actually have a bit of a follow-up next from Xiao Xin. If that name rings a bell, it very much should. You may recall that I discussed their processes in a recent video, that being the KH4000 series of processes and KX7000 series of processes. And this was a roadmap that was shown, and these processes actually look pretty damn promising. And basically the company has issued a statement to EETChina.com and you can of course find that link in the description below this video but you will unsurprisingly have to get your Google Translate on. So basically what they're saying in this statement is that they will not be using AMD's underlying technology for next gen processors and are instead going to be making use of a independent micro architecture. Now they did talk a little bit um, more about what they're currently doing. They basically said that they're also looking beyond 7nm at the moment. At present they are still stuck on 16nm with the KH4000 which obviously is a little bit behind um, given that of course AMD are currently on 7nm and looking forward to 5nm and so on and so forth and NVIDIA are doing the same with their graphics side of things. Uh, and Intel, of course, are, are finally moving over to 10nm, but they are working on 7nm processors and below that for their future series of chips. Still, it's going to be interesting to see how these processors fare against both Intel and AMD. I definitely think they're promising because even though they are behind architecture wise, they're still producing some pretty nice results and I look forward to seeing what they can do on the 7nm architecture. They might be a little bit slower than AMD and Intel so I don't ever think these processors are ever going to be cutting edge, at least not at the moment, but it doesn't change the fact that they are definitely intriguing and I think they are worth keeping an eye on to see what they produce in the future and how they actually compete in the marketplace, especially outside of the Chinese market, if indeed that is something they decide to aim for. But let's move on from that, shall we, to the end of an era for some versions of 3D Mark. So basically, What's happening is that support is being ended for 3D Mark 11, PC Mark 7, and also some 3D Mark benchmarks like Cloudgate and Ice Storm. If those don't really sound familiar, it's because they're not really used that much anymore. You know, most people use Time Spy, Firestrike, and so on, which is probably one of the reasons they are no longer being supported, and these are going to be by January 20, sorry, January 14th, 2020 not sold on by UL themselves, Steam or any other app stores will not be receiving any updates and will no longer be eligible for support. So yes, shed a tear, it is very much the end of an era. But let's move on to our final topic for today, which is regarding the PlayStation 5. It seems I can't go even a couple of days without talking about the next generation consoles and unsurprisingly we are very much reaching the end of life for both the Xbox um, and PlayStation 4. And just the other day, I talked about loading screens and how Microsoft have the fairly lofty goal of virtually eliminating loading screens in games. And I also mentioned in that video how Sony have already expressed this desire for the PlayStation 5. And once again, this has been expressed, this time by The Last of Us Part 2 co-game director, Carl Mc uh, McGurney. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. I don't think I have, to be honest. But basically... There was a tweet from Rami Ismail, and he said, quote, If in our current timeline it was traditional that game loading screens contain weird development trivia or complaints or whatever, or instead of game law slash hints, what would be on your loading screens? To which Kurt replied, What's a loading screen? So obviously he's being sarcastic and tongue-in-cheek here, but it still hints the fact that, at least for Naughty Dog, loading screens are a thing of the past. Now, as discussed in my other video when I touched on this and how some games have already done this, like The Witcher 3, for instance, and how when you're going about the world just walking around, there is no loading screens. It will load when you fast travel, for instance, which is fair, but when you're just moving around the world, the game won't have a traditional loading screen. And we have seen other games do this as well, of course, and more and more games have been pushing this as a feature. And... With the uh, massive upgrade in tech, particularly the SSD, this is becoming more possible with the next generation. So I'm not surprised to see Naughty Dog, which of course is one of Sony's home uh, development teams, kind of teasing the fact that we're not going to see any loading screens for, say, The Last of Us 2 and any future games that they decide to work on. 
This goes to show you that the war is very much on between these two consoles, but Paul has some very juicy news upcoming actually regarding the specs of both systems, so do actually uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. I know he's actually been given some very nice information on the Xbox Series X, uh, but I'm not going to go into too much into that because I don't actually know any details, I just know that he has that information. He is working on a video for you guys, so you can keep that, um, keep your eyes peeled for that, sorry, should I say fairly soon. Who ends up being on top, however, outside of these two consoles, unfortunately only time will tell, but just goes to show you they are pretty much matching each other step for step when it comes to feature promises at the moment, but of course I have no doubt that both companies have hidden tricks up their sleeve that will only be revealed at E3. But that is me done for this video, thank you so much for watching, as always your support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time, bye bye.